Hi, and welcome to this introduction to designing sounds using FabFilter Twin 2. Here we see the default preset. The upper section shows us a schematic type view of the three oscillators, two filters, and the delay section, while the lower section can be scrolled to show all the active modulation sources. This bottom section may look a little daunting, but it is only ever as complex as it needs to be. If I choose the clean preset instead, we see a much smaller set of modulators, and I can simplify it even further by deleting the XY1 pad and the two MIDI sources. Now we have the simplest possible patch, with no velocity sensitivity, no pitch bending, and just a single main amp envelope. I'm going to turn up the release a bit, but otherwise leave the default settings. In the top section, we have a single oscillator enabled, with the sawtooth wave selected. If I hover over the oscillator 2 icon, I can enable it using the button in the top corner. I can also adjust the fine tuning by dragging left or right, and can switch it up or down octaves by dragging vertically. I can make more precise adjustments by clicking the icon to reveal detailed oscillator parameters. I'm going to set oscillator 2 one octave higher than oscillator 1, and tune it down just a tiny bit. I'm also going to enable oscillator 3, switch it to another sawtooth wave, and tune it up two octaves, plus a few extra cents. We now have a rich and bright stacked sound, with subtle movement from the detuned waves cycling in and out of phase with each other. We can create more extreme detuning effects via the unison parameter at the bottom. If I switch this to 4, each note I play triggers 4 twin 2 voices instead of just 1, giving us a total of 12 detuned oscillators per note. I can control the amount of unison detuning via the spread parameter, which turns into a knob when clicked. Of course, triggering 4 times as many voices for every note we play uses up our polyphony quicker. So if I want to be able to play 3 note chords, I will need to increase the maximum number of voices to 12. Now I want to add some filtering. I can adjust cutoff and resonance for each filter by dragging over the icon. But again, I need to click the icon to reveal detailed filter parameters. And we now see options to change the type of filter and the filter slope. I'm going to switch the slope to 24 dB per octave instead of 12. I'm not happy with a static filter, however, so I'm going to click the plus symbol to add a new modulation source and choose new XLFO. Now we can see XLFO1 in the bottom section, but it's not assigned to anything yet. So I'm going to click the source drag button in the top left of the modulator and drag a wire from it. Notice that the interface goes dark, leaving just potential modulation targets highlighted. And the end of the cable will snap to these targets. I want to modulate filter one cutoff, so I'll drag the cable to that knob and let go. Now we see a modulation slot above XLFO1 labelled Filter 1 Frequency, and I can drag this left or right to control the modulation depth. I'm looking for a specific type of rhythmic pluck effect here, so I'll set the XLFO to sync to eighth notes, and then drag the balance ring around the offset knob all the way to the left. This shortens the first half of the cycle to nothing, while lengthening the second half accordingly. I can make this pluckier by selecting step 2 and switching its shape to square root instead of sine. I'm going to click the plus symbol again now, and this time I will add an XY controller. The resulting XY1 pad has two source drag buttons in the top left corner. I'm going to click the Y button and drag a wire from it like before. But notice that the filter 1 frequency slot we just created now also shows up as a possible destination. Now we have a new modulation slot for the XY pad, labelled slot 1 level. If I turn slot 1 itself all the way down, I can control the filter pluck modulation from the Y axis of the pad. And if I turn up the level of slot 2, I can increase the range of control available. I can also invert the modulation by clicking the plus symbol at the left of the slot to turn it into a minus. And if I turn slot 1 back up to about the same level, I get an inverted control, with full modulation at the bottom of the pad, and no modulation at the top. This way around makes more sense if I also link the Y axis directly to the filter cutoff. 
and turn up the depth a bit. So the filter is static and wide open with the cursor at the top of the pad, but closed down and modulated with the cursor at the bottom. Now I will link the x-axis of the pad to the pan ring for filter 1, so I can drag left or right to offset the filter cutoff for the left and right channels. This assignment seems more intuitive to me if I invert the modulation again, so that dragging left raises the cutoff for the left channel, and vice versa. So, let's add some delay. I'll turn on the delay section. Click one of the delay icons to show detailed parameters. And I'm going to set a one note BPM sync for both left and right channels. But then click one of the dots around the edge of the right offset knob to create a syncopated rhythm in the delay repeat. Finally, I will set the delay filters to band limit the delays a little, using a high pass filter in series with a low pass filter. And perhaps turn down the delay level a touch. Okay, let's have another quick example. I'll load up the clean preset again, but this time I'm going to make a lead type sound. So I will start by switching twin into mono mode at the bottom, so that it responds like an analog mono synth. I might also dial in a touch of portamento to make notes glide into each other, but switch it to legato mode so that notes only glide if they overlap. Our basic sawtooth sound has velocity linked to output volume, as we can see from the modulation slot above the MIDI velocity source. I don't want this for my lead patch, but instead of deleting the entire source as we did before, I'm just going to delete the slot and keep the source in place. Now I will visit our oscillator section. I'm going to set oscillator 2 exactly the same as 1, but notice that when I switch it on, the tone changes, because the two sawtooth waves are not in phase with each other. If I turn on the phase sync buttons for both oscillators, they will be reset for every note on. So they are now in phase all the time, and turning them both on just makes the sound louder. But if phase sync is turned on for only one of them, that oscillator will reset on every note, while the other runs freely. So every note will sound slightly different. Vibrato is good for a lead patch, so I'll click the plus symbol and add a new XLFO and drag a connection to the master tune knob. The default sine wave shape is fine for vibrato, but I need it to be faster, around 6 Hz or so. And obviously I need to turn down the modulation depth to get anything like proper vibrato. Actually I'm going to turn it all the way down, click the plus symbol again, and add another MIDI source. This defaults to mod wheel, which is perfect. I'll drag a connection over to the master tune slot, then turn that modulation depth down to a suitable level. I can now introduce vibrato using the mod wheel in the traditional manner. Of course, if your keyboard sends aftertouch, you could select that as the source instead, if you prefer. OK, let's move on to the filter section. I'm going to pick a bandpass type this time, switch the slope to 24 dB per octave, and dial in a bit of resonance. Notice the wah-wah type effect I get if I sweep the cutoff through the low mid frequencies. I'm going to create some modulation to do this for me. I'll click the plus symbol again, but choose new envelope generator this time, and drag a connection to the frequency knob as before. If I turn the sustain level all the way down, and tweak the attack and decay times accordingly, I can create a wow type of articulation on every note. I'm going to set up filter 2 with another 24 dB per octave bandpass type, but I'm also going to switch the filter configuration to parallel instead of series. If I dial in some resonance and set the frequency slightly higher than filter 1, I can start to emulate the formant frequencies of a human voice. Let's have another new XLFO, and this time I'm going to click the preset button and load the sample hold full glide setting which gives us smooth random modulation. And let's link this to filter 2's frequency knob. Now we have semi-randomly morphing vowel type sounds. As a final touch, I'm going to link the MIDI velocity source to the peak knob of both filters, so I can use my playing dynamics to control the resonance. That's all I've got time for in this video, thanks for watching.